Good day, Grade 7 learners, and welcome to Tuma Mina Teaching. This is your second lesson in a series of five lessons for Grade 7 EMS Term 2. Today we are going to look at personal finances, specifically income and expenses. Are you ready? Grab your EMS workbook and your pen and let's go. In the previous lesson, we became more familiar with income and expenses. Do you still remember what these concepts mean? Pause the video and discuss these concepts with your teacher. But remember, raise your hand. Well done, Grade Sevens. I'm sure you got this one correct, but if you were a little bit unsure, please revisit Lesson 1. So let's take a further look at personal income. Personal income is an individual's total annual earnings from various sources of income. So basically, Grade Sevens, this is all the money that a person receives. One gets different sources of income. Let's take a look at a few examples of these. The biggest income is a person's salary or wages. Salary or wages is the money a person receives for work performed. Salary is paid monthly, whereas wages are usually paid weekly. The second type of income is income made from capital. For example, if you put money into an investment account, for example, your savings account, you would earn interest on this money. This is seen as another source of income. The third source of income is real estate. For example, you can buy an apartment and rent it out to someone else and thus also earn an income from it. Furthermore, we can also buy shares in a business and receive dividends on these shares. But you'll learn more about this in high school. Next, we're going to look at personal expenses. Personal expenses are costs that a person incurs on their daily life. This is basically the money you spend to be able to live. Can you think of a few such expenses? Pause this video and make a list of all the expenses you think your household has every month. Could you think of a few examples? Perhaps this came into your head, or this, or this, or maybe even this. The following concept is a personal statement of net worth. An individual's net worth is their financial worth at any given time. People calculate the net worth to determine whether their wealth is growing or declining. You would probably have heard of people talking about a very famous footballer, or a very famous actress, and then saying that this person is worth so much. You can only do this if you calculate the individual's net worth. To be able to calculate this, you have to draw up a statement of net worth. The formula for calculating an individual's net worth is net worth equals total assets minus total liabilities. So we can further say that income increases your net worth, whereas expenses decreases your net worth. You will make a surplus if your assets are more than your liabilities. However, you will have a deficit if your liabilities are more than your assets. So let's take a practical look at how we can draw up a personal statement of net worth. You can do it by following these five easy steps. First, get all your records together. Secondly, make a list of all assets and add up the total assets. Thirdly, make another list and also add up all the total liabilities. Then, subtract the liabilities from the assets. Remember our formula? Net worth equals total assets minus total liabilities. And lastly, determine whether your net worth has a surplus or a deficit. Okay, Grade Sevens, do you still remember Cyril? Let's take a look at Cyril's personal net worth. So you have to prepare Cyril's personal statement of net worth for the month of May for 2023. Remember, assets are what you own, liabilities are what you owe. Okay, Grade Sevens, we are going to do this next activity together. I'm going to give you the name of the account, and as I count down, you are going to say what account it is.
Are you ready? Let's go. The mobile phone, is it an asset or a liability? It's an asset. The next one, a loan from the bank. It's a liability. Next is money in a savings account. Asset or liability? It's an asset, of course. What about Cyril's credit card? That's a liability. What about Cyril's car? That's an asset. Clothing account at Mr. Price? Is it an asset or a liability? That's a liability. And the last one, furniture that Cyril owns? That's an asset. Now, let's take it step by step. Step one, get all the records together. Okay, so they've given us all the records. Let's move on to step two. Step two says that we need to list all the assets and add them together. Can you identify all the assets? After that, we are going to list all of the liabilities and add them together. This is step three, of course. So we've identified all of the assets and we've added them together. And we've done the same with the liabilities. What now? Remember, step four says that we need to subtract our liabilities from our assets. This will enable us to see what Cyril's net worth is. Does he have a surplus or does he have a deficit? Grade 7, you do the math. A surplus, of course. Well done. And so we have come to the end of another lesson. Next time, we will continue with income and expenses, but those of a business. See you next time.